Okay, so we've uh, installed a few pieces of our lap siding here and we have now um, gotten to the point where we are focusing on our little makeshift uh, hose bib here. Um, again, we're gonna show you how to flash something that um, basically you can't cut a perfect circle around and slip the piece over. Uh, if you can imagine, there would be a hose bib soldered on the end of this, so um, you wouldn't actually be able to slide the piece over it. So we're gonna have to do a, a little bit of flashing here to make sure that it is completely weather tight um, and any water won't get behind, um, the, or if it does get behind the siding, uh, this flashing will help um, shed the water away. So what I have here is a piece of ice and water. This is uh, that membrane that we use on the roof um, to protect the front eaves. Um, and what I've done is I've cut a rectangle here. I've cut a little hole out to be able to go around um, our hose bib here. And I'm just gonna put it in place. Um, but there's two things that I really wanna kind of point out here. Um, I've made a slit so we can get it around our hose bib here. Um, but if you notice, I have this slit going up. Um, that way, if any water gets behind the siding, the majority of it is gonna be going down here on this solid part because gravity is gonna work in our favor. Um, so this is just uh, that added insurance. It's not gonna be perfect, but the rest of that we put on here is gonna really help. So the second part that I wanna point out is that this, um, this flashing here is going over our um, piece of siding down here. Um, and it's important to make sure that you are staying above your overlap. Um, so I basically tried to line it up with our nailing line here. Um, but that way, if any water gets behind um, our siding up here, it'll shed down, then go over our piece of siding here, and that water will shed out um, onto the side of the house. So this is that first important step. Um, the second part we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna uh, put on our trim piece here. Um, this will help uh, whenever, well, well one, it'll trim it out, but then two, if you do have something like a hose bib or if we're working with something bigger like an electrical box, um, we'll be able to have a surface to screw back onto and it'll be a flat surface. Um, so what I have here is I have basically one piece of our trim board and I've cut it at a 45 degree angle. Well, I, I, did, I drilled a hole through it first and then I cut it at a 45 degree angle. That way, um, water, if it does try to go in, it would have to go uphill first to get behind the piece. Um, and then we'll put a little bit of a, a silicone bead in there um, and it's pretty much impossible for water to get back behind there. So I basically cut that 45 right through the center of the hole here. And then this top piece will go back on and then we'll screw this shut. So I'm gonna grab a caulk gun real quick um, and then we'll throw a bead of caulk in here and screw this in place. All right, so I grabbed the caulk gun here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get just a little bit in the back of the hole here. We're gonna make a nice bead on the outside. So whenever we're doing this, this is finish work, uh, we want it to be um, we want it to work, um, but you don't want to put a huge uh, bead of cock here. You just want basically a barrier. So I have the tip of this gun cut very shallow, and I'm just going to put a thin bead across here. And then I'm going to try to get some in the back here along the hose bib. Again, we're going to have a nice bead out front, but this is just a little extra precaution here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this piece on and you'll want to get it level before you screw it into place here. And then we have our trim screws. I'm just going to screw it into place. Double check that it's level before you completely screw it off. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece. I don't have to put a bead across here because I have this, um, but I'm gonna try to get some in the back of this little cutout here. Okay, and now when we put this over 
this piece that will embed itself into that bead that we just put on there. And now we can go ahead and screw this top piece off. And I'm not worrying too much about the color of caulk that I'm using because we're going to paint right over this. Okay, so to finish this little guy off here, I'm going to put a bead of caulk right around the hose bib itself. And if you notice, I'm just putting a little bit and it doesn't have to be super nice this first little pass because we'll all smooth it out with our finger. Alright, so now all you have to do is just wet your finger and smooth that joint right out. Okay, and that, that'll be more than enough um, silicone in there to seal that joint. And then uh, we can go ahead and side right around this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my next piece cut. Um, to our final length from trim piece to trim piece here, and then we'll show you how to cut around um, this little trim piece here. Okay, uh, we got our next piece up here, um, and real quickly before we move on, I just wanted to touch on one point here. Uh, we did uh, go ahead and spray paint the edges, all of our cut edges um, from our trim here. Um, and just to reiterate, anytime we ever cut any of our trim or our hardy board, we should be going back with some primer. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a perfect color match because we'll go ahead and prime this whole thing and paint it later. So um, might look a little bit weird um, once you install it, but after you paint it, it will all look nice and uniform. So we went ahead and pre-cut our next piece here. Um, and you can see it's going to be hitting our uh, trim piece that we just installed. Um, so what we're going to do, um, Again, we'll center it in our opening here because we cut it just a hair short um, for some expansion. And then I'm just going to go ahead and mark um, the edges of our trim board here. And this is a tip that I kind of go off of. Um, if you remember, we do need to have a little bit of room for expansion here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and mark these um, pretty much right on the edge. I'm not going to account for any um, expansion um, because when you actually go to use your circular saw it's very hard to get right up to that line um, and you're probably going to go over just a little bit anyway and it usually works out to be right on um, or at least right on for the amount that you need to account for. Um, you can always take more off but if you try to add that and then cut it you're, you might uh, add just a little bit too much. Um, so go right accurate at first um, and you'll probably come out pretty good. Um, then I'm going to also measure up from the back here and see what I have. I have an inch here and it's a good idea to check both sides even though it's a little piece and I have an inch here. So all I have to do is transfer that line to the front and now I'll be able to go cut this part out um, with a jigsaw and that's what we're going to do right now. So. We'll go get that cut out and we'll be back in a sec. All right, we uh, went ahead and cut out our piece. Um, and you can kind of see here, um, we have about that 16th to an eighth inch all the way around here. And all I did was cut right on our line. Um, and like I said, I, I measured out accurately. Um, I didn't account for any opening, uh, but with using a jigsaw or a circular saw, if you try to cut right on the line with this hardy board stuff, um, it usually comes out just a little bit bigger. So um, you can always cut off more. But again, we just had a cut here. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this edge with some primer. And then we're ready to put it in place. So I can grab some siding nails here. And again, we're going right into our studs right on our nail, nail line here. Okay, we got our next piece um, up in place here. Um, and what we're gonna do is now we're gonna mark out the top um, for our trim piece here. 
Uh, so these are the spacer blocks that I've been using. Um, again, these just go um, on the bottom of each piece. And then I have my reveal, basically, it's a seven inch reveal from this spacer here to the top. Um, and your siding then sits right on top of there. Um, this way you know you're even all the way across. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this um, as a measurement here. Again, I, just like the bottom, I'm gonna measure out accurately my edges. And now what I can do is measure from the bottom of this piece to the top of my spacer here, making sure it's pushed all the way up. And I got six and one sixteenth inches. Pretty much on both sides. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and measure up six and a sixteenth. And then I can cut this square out and put it in place just like the first one on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that and come back. Okay, so we've now installed our piece over our um, trim piece here. Um, and then the last step to do is just to put a nice bead of caulk along the edges. I've done two sides here. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate the last one. Um, again, we're just gonna put a really thin bead. Um, there's no need to put a real thick bead on here. Just nice and thin like this, and then all you have to do is run your finger across the rest of it, and that'll paint up nice and neat. Um, so the last thing you wanna do is just pile on this caulk um, really heavy and leave a really thick uh, cove here. Um, that's just gonna not paint up very nicely and you're really gonna be able to see it through the paint. Um, so just take your time and do a nice thin bead just like that, just fill up the groove. Um, and then you can wipe away all the excess and there's hardly anything left on your finger. Um, so just take your time to put a, a nice small bead on there and the rest of the project will go um, nice and smooth with painting.